Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. Today I'm gonna to be talking about my most successful niche blind buys. It's been super gloomy lately and I just wanna do like an uplifting mood video and like talk about my success rather than like my most recent ones where it was most regrettable blind buys. Now I'm gonna talk about my most successful and not only that, my most successful niche blind buys. All my animals are here filming with me. I'm gonna show you guys. You know, we have Bernie, don't mind my laundry on the floor. We have Peppy at the window. Oh, we have Yukon. He's fiercely private and he doesn't like to be on camera. Yukon. No, he's not into it. Yeah, so I'm filming with a live audience today. And as usual, wine of the night. It's this one this time. I, I like to mix it up and I just like, I got it because of the packaging. It's okay. It's not my favorite. I would not recommend. Like it's still drinkable, but. It's not ideal. Oh, and also a lot of you guys have been asking me what I wear on my lips, which like, I don't know why because my lip game is not on point. But anyway, I'm gonna tell you now because I usually forget. And then by the time you ask me, I have no idea what I've been wearing. So the lip liner is most usually the Makeup Forever Wherever Walnut. And yeah, I'll, I'll link it down below for you guys. And then I layered it with the Tarte, Tarte Matte Lip Paint. And this is in Namaste. And that's it. Like, I don't really do much on my lips. I probably should. Okay, we're just gonna get into my most successful blind buys. And these are in no particular order. These are all niche. Some of these are unisex. I find them to be feminine leaning, but obviously everything is unisex. The first one is by Rideau Blanche. And I really like this one because it's just like a clean laundry smell. I might as well spray it in the air because it's a really clean laundry smell and I don't mind if it gets on my bed. Yeah, it's just like a fresh, floral, really luxury laundry detergent type of scent if you're into that sort of thing. I really like it. I like to wear it to the office. I like to wear it in the spring. It's kind of like a dumb reach niche one for me where I'm like, I just want to smell clean and I don't really want to get too elaborate. This is really, really nice. If you want that like really expensive dryer sheet laundry detergent scent, it's really pretty. I really like it. Most of it is aldehydes. Aldehydes are the component in a fragrance that make it smell soapy or clean. It's a, it's a synthetic component, but yeah, most of it is that. Honestly, some obscure floral notes, but I actually really like this and I wouldn't recommend buying it for full pop, but I did get a huge discount on it. So, and it's like, it's still like floating around in the air. It actually smells really, really lovely. Like I don't see anybody disliking this. It just smells super clean. It's very versatile. It's not boring. And it's actually like you'd think by Rito is, they tend to be on the lighter side. This one's not that light. Like it does have a presence when I spray it. So I do really like this one. It's by Rito Blanche. The next one is L'Artisan Parfumeur. And this is La Chasse au Papillon Extreme. And this one has a note of linden, which I wasn't sure how it would come out in a fragrance. I bought this again because it was on a huge discount. So I recommend if you're going to blind buy niche, don't buy it for full pop. Go and find it online. There's like fragrancebuy.ca. There's fragrancenet.com. There's a bunch of sites. Just a quick Google search. You can find them on discount. Anyway, um, this one's really pretty. It's like a kind of like an herbaceous honey-esque sweetness. If you're familiar with linden trees, like where I grew up, we had a lot of linden trees. And so this like kind of takes me back to my childhood, which I love and it's sweet. And it just makes you think of like a, like a spring morning when everything is dewy and you can just like smell that fresh, not grassy, but that like green, fresh spring morning. That's what this smells like. And I really like it. So that's La Chasse au Papillon Extreme and that's from L'Artisan Parfumeur. And this one, like honestly, this brand right now, you can find a lot of them on discount. So yeah, check it out if you can. And I think I got mine for like $67. This one, I do find it feminine leaning because there's also a lot of tuberose in here. There's honey and it is quite sweet, not super sweet, it's really light, but it has like a really interesting herbal aspect to it, which isn't like a typical like sage or whatever, it's different, it's linden. If you guys know the scent of linden, like linden tea or whatever, it almost reminds me a little bit of chamomile, but sweeter and more like honey-esque. That's what, the, that's the note that's in here. So the next one is Maison Lancome, and this is Jasmine's Marzipan. 
I'm just gonna call it Jasmine's Marzipan. I'm not gonna go super French with the pronunciation all the time just because I know that not all of you guys like it and you guys don't understand what I'm saying anyways. And I honestly don't feel like it sometimes. So I'm just gonna kind of Englishify it for you. Englify it, whatever. This one is just a really, really sweet, beautiful jasmine. There's vanilla, there's almond wood, not almond. So it's called marzipan and you'd think that it'd be like a marzipan sweet. Um, jasmine-esque scent, but it's actually just a sweet jasmine. I'm just going to spray it right now. It's very rich. It is it is very sweet. You have to be into sweet scents, and I really love this one. And you know what? Actually, this kind of reminds me, this kind of reminds me a little bit of the previous one. I don't know if it's just <laughs> stuck in my nose still, but they have a similar kind of vibe about them, Le Chasse Papillon Extreme. This one and this one except that the other one has a more herbaceous linden scent, but this one is sweet. Like, I don't think there's honey in there, but there might as well be. It's very like sweet, almondy, musky vanilla, and and very, very jasmine. And this one always gets me a compliment whenever I wear it. That's not why I wear fragrances, by the way. Like, I only ever wear fragrances for myself, as most people in Fragcom do, but it's never bad to get a compliment. So, because you, you know that, like then people around you like it too. So yeah, I'm very happy with this. I think I got it for like 160. So it wasn't cheap, but it was on discount. And so I would consider that money well spent. The next one is Serge Lutin and this is Detour Noir. And I really like this one too. It's white floral, there's coconut in a spray. I haven't worn it in a while because I find this more of like a spring summer. Yeah, it just like it's very beachy, but again, not in a suntan lotion kind of way. It's creamy, tuberose, very rich. There's a common theme here. Not sure if you guys noticed, but I really like white florals and I find them generally a fairly safe blind buy for me. This one's like a creamy, coconutty tuberose. It's a little bit powdery. It's it's really, really pretty. I find that this one as well is really hard to dislike. So yeah, that was, I think I spent 80 on this and I'm really happy with it. I wore it a lot. This was all last spring. I wore all of this just last spring and that was it, like last spring and summer. So I did get a lot of wear out of it and yeah, it's still super cold here. So I'm not reaching for this right now, but I will hopefully soon. The next one is a diptyque fragrance and this is L'Ombre dans l'eau. This one is mainly rose and black currant. That's basically it. Like various types of black currant scent. It's quite tart. Here we go. It's green, but it has a certain like creamy sexiness about it. It's a really, really interesting kind of composition. It's a little bit like mysterious, but it has a lot of like green nuances, like just that black currant and black currant leaf. It, it's really, really like noticeable in here. I would say it's more noticeable than the rose for sure. And those are the dominant notes. That's basically what it is, if you can imagine that. Also, I just recently got this room spray from Diptyque and they do smell really similar. This one is more complex and more wearable as a fragrance. This one I wouldn't wear as a fragrance, but it's a great room spray, but they do have a lot of similarity and they're both black currant and rose, like really beautiful spring scents, both of them. I got this at the Holt Renfrew sale. They had their spring sale and it was 15% off. So yeah, I think I paid 75 for this and I thought I could wear it as a fragrance, but when I got it, I realized how similar it is to this one. And like, this one actually smells like a fragrance and this one's obviously a room spray. So like, whatever, I'm gonna, I'm still gonna use it as a room spray, but not as a fragrance. So if you like black currant, like this is a really, really nice take on it. And then we're gonna jump around a little bit. And the next one is Unknown Pleasures by Kerosene. I am not gonna spray this one because as I've mentioned before, it's super dense and like you can, like I can already smell it and it's not even up to my nose. It's really, really sweet. It's really well crafted and it's like an, a sweet London fog tea with waffles. It's like there's some caramel aspect almost to it. There's a lot of like that sweet, creamy earl grey tea and this that like scent of waffles that's kind of what this smells like to me 
It's really, really beautiful. It's a really interesting scent. I've never smelled anything like this. I like to wear this in the winter and I will give it like one maximum two sprays. You can smell this all day and this is like one of the most beast mode fragrances I've ever encountered. I really like it. I'm not a gourmand type of person and I do actually really enjoy this one. So I was happy to get that. I want to get more from this house. Let me know which, which fragrances from the house of kerosene you guys really love because I want to get more. So yeah, that's unknown pleasures. And finally, I randomly got this one on like a Kijiji haul and this is from Bastide and it's called Figue Amour. I've never tried this fragrance. I did see it at Holt Renfrew, but I'd never tried it before and it's like a milky fig fragrance. I've been on the hunt for a fig fragrance and I really like this one and I couldn't believe I got this for $40. So like obviously you can't regret that. But it's really, really nice. It's like a really like juicy, milky fig. It does remind me a lot of Philosticos by Diptyque, but it's different. It's not as milky as that one. It's like doesn't have that coconut in there. And it's more like on the green side. So I do really like this one. I do want to play with layering it too. And I think it would layer really well with... I have Calvin Klein Reveal. I bet it would layer really, really well with that. So... Yeah, anyway, this one is great on its own. It's great for layering. The longevity on this, even though it's an eau de toilette, is really good. So I'm super happy that I finally have a fig fragrance because it's been really hard for me to find a fig fragrance. I'm actually going to film another regrets video after this. And it has a fig fragrance in there that didn't work out for me. So yeah, this one did though. So I do recommend this one. And again, I always recommend that you guys sample first. Like I obviously do a lot of blind buying, but I'm just that kind of person. Like I'm a gambling person and I like to do it. So whatever, but it's nice if it works out and these all worked out for me and they were all niche. So all the better. Let me know what your most successful niche or designer blind buys were recently or not recently. Just, I want to know. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.